Um, I'm still watching data to see to what extent I might revise that, but the current data I think point towards this kind of more stagflationary type of environment because, you know, especially in the modern day when people think of recessions, uh, we've been so accustomed to think of, you know, 2008 and then like, you know, 2020 COVID, like these, these like huge deflationary just collapses. Whereas you look into the prior one, let's say after the dot-com bubble, for example, that was a mild recession. Um, and I think the one now, it's not, it's not the same as back then because a lot of things were in our favor back then, but essentially when you go back to the thing, whereas we're running 8% of GDP deficits when unemployment is below 4%. Uh, we are running $2 trillion deficits before there's even a recession. Uh, and if we get a recession, those will widen because tax revenue will stagnate. Um, and so, you know, it's it's just, you, you absolutely can have a recession when you're doing that, but it changes the scope of the recession. Uh, and one comparison is kind of to look at what happens in emerging markets during recessions, right? It, it's, you know, I mean, there's different types of them, but a lot of times what ends up happening is that, you know, nominal numbers still go up. Uh, it, it's just that, you know, you have kind of stick inflation because usually their currency is not doing great. Um, so usually, so for example, their stock market is often going up in local currency terms during recession. Uh, but of course, it's going, it's doing poorly in dollar terms or gold terms, you know, kind of a hard, harder money uh, comparison. But usually you have that environment where because their currency is having a problem, because they're running big deficits, uh, it's just a very different type of recession, uh, mm-hmm. which is it's, it's not really a better or worse. It's just different. Um, and so, you know, especially with labor shortages and a $2 trillion annualized deficit, um, I think any recession we'd see in this environment is likely to be somewhat different than the big deflationary bust that we're used to. Um, potentially another way of looking at that is you, you could certainly have segments that are having that kind of catastrophic deflationary bust. I mean, you know, I don't think too many people are bullish about office um, real estate, for example, uh, you know, with, with interest rates have gone what they do and, you know, with their occupancy rates, what they are. There are certain parts of the economy that I, you know, wouldn't touch with a 10 foot pole. But on the other hand, that's offset by basically things that are getting stimulated. Right. So we have like record numbers of uh, air travelers right now, even as we have, you know, a lot of things point to recession. So if you look at gross national income, it says recession. If you look at um, uh, ISM manufacturing purchasing managers index, uh, that says recession. Um, so a lot of different indicators suggest either recession or near recession, basically like stall speed. Uh, on the other hand, the you're pouring money into the travel sector and you're pouring money into all these other things, you kind of balance it out, or at least, you know, on an aggregate level, you somewhat balance it out, or at least you soften the blow. Um, of course, that comes with the cost of, of inflation does not come down as quickly as people think. And I think the biggest problem, you know, when I analyze the topic of inflation, it's not whether or not they can get it down in the near term. And if you cause a recession, you can get it down. Uh, in the near term, most likely, and that that's so far what we've been seeing, you know, a reduction in economic activity, reduction in year over year CPI. My concern is that the next time they want to have a period of growth, so the next time they want to have rising PMIs, the next time they want to have uh, rising year over year um, GDP levels uh, and things like that, there's a very high chance that's going to come with some degree of inflation again because the core problems are not actually being addressed. So the rates and things like that are not actually addressing the core problem, which is the combination of large fiscal deficits and then any sort of like supply side constraints we've run into, let's say energy, for example. Yeah, so so far China had a slower reopening uh, than a number of people thought. Um, they, their economy is kind of coming out of their lockdowns pretty sluggishly, um, in part because their fiscal policy at the moment is kind of the opposite of ours. Um, you know, they're not running big deficits. They're, they're trying to be somewhat more austere. Um, they've got other, you know, they have, they have problems in the real estate sector. They, you know, they're doing a little bit of um, loosening with their monetary policy, um, but they're not really resorting to fiscal yet. Um, and so China's coming out of this pretty slow. Um, also, Europe's partially deindustrializing because, you know, they, they just don't have the energy infrastructure to, uh, you know, grow their industrial base the way they used to. Um, and so we have, you know, kind of this like uh, decent supply demand mix for oil at the moment. Um, there's, you know, there's pariah states that are still able to get their oil to market. So the supply side's been decent and demand's been kind of muted. It's not been collapsing, but it's not been booming either. Or more specifically, it's booming in some areas. It's kind of pulling back in others. I think the challenge is that when you look at it a little bit further, so most of the growth in oil we've seen over the past decade was from U.S. shale. Um, 
And that is, you know, you, you, it requires constant drilling. You get oil supply online quicker, but if you stop drilling, it, it starts declining a lot quicker as well. It's not like an offshore oil project where you're gonna get this like long, reliable period of oil with a big upfront cost. It's more like this rapid um, uh, thing on shore. And the problem is that in recent months, uh, drilling has kind of rolled over. Um, hmm. And production has not rolled over yet, but that, that comes with a lag. Uh, and of course, depending on how much drilling rolls over, production could just it could kind of flatline for a period of time. It could actually dip uh, somewhat. But I think the point is that supply side just does not look super healthy. So, you know, in the run up to the global financial crisis, so the whole like, you know, most of the 2000s decade, um, you had a commodity bull market. Um, but we also had a lot of new supply come online. Um, you know, there's a lot of drilling and a lot of capex and, and things like that. Um, whereas in in this kind of recent bull market, um, all the participants have faded it. So all the oil companies, you know, that when oil was spiking to 120, they're like, no, no, we're going to be disciplined. Uh, we're going to, you know, strengthen our balance sheets. We're going to return capital to shareholders. We're not just going to keep plowing it back into the ground. And so that's kind of starting to materialize now, which is we never really brought a lot of supply online. Um, we also, you know, the United States drew down a strategic petroleum reserve. Um, that's actually another way we kind of were emerging market like. So what does an emerging market do when they have a, a problem uh, with inflation? Well, one of the things they can do is sell some of their foreign exchange reserves and try to shore up their currency. Um, the United States kind of treated its oil uh, like that. We, we, we drew down, you know, not FX reserves, but oil reserves. Um, to you know kind of helps fix the supply demand balance what was happening and you know support uh you know that inflation reduction problem is that can't be repeated again um you know at least not at that magnitude and so when you look around and say well now there's not really like another sbr uh about the flood the market um shale is you know it's the production's kind of how it was a few years ago it's recovered somewhat but again you have drilling rolling over and so i i think when you look out a few years, um, the oil market does look pretty tight. Now, when you look at any sort of six month period, that's, I think, more of a demand question, right? So it's you have to ask questions like, is China going to do some fiscal policy? Or are they going to kind of keep in this like stall speed that they're on? Uh, the United States, you know, are we going to enter or be confirmed to be in an outright recession? Or are we going to or are these like fiscal deficits going to kind of keep us at stall speed, for example? Small ebook, big impact, the wealth tree, the only four ways that will make you financially free forever. Download it here for free.